Welcome to the latest edition of the Food Systems Podcast, brought to you by the Forum for the Future of Agriculture. I'm your host, Mark Titterington, and I'm delighted to welcome to our first podcast following the summer break, Emmanuel Mikosh, the Deputy Director and Programme Director of the Forum, to talk to us about what the Forum has been up to over the last couple of months and a look ahead into our autumn and winter programme. Uh, Emma, uh, delighted as always to, to have you with us, great friend and colleague, of course. Um, the Forum has been busy over the uh, the summer months. Um, what stands out for you? Happy to be here also with you, Mark. Um, yes, um, the Forum has been busy. Um, so. Uh, after the big March event in Brussels, um, we have jumped towards our regional events. Um, and um, the one um, I would like to talk now, it's the one we have done in Spain at the end of May. Um, it is also linked to the European, uh, to the uh, presidency of the European Council. So that's why we also went to Spain. Um, and it was the opportunity to discuss the outcomes from the Brussels annual event, but of course also to have the input from our regional friends and partners um, to make progress on some of the most important topics like how to implement the call to action. We have also presented during um, our Brussels event and to speak, of course, about um, detailed um, questions and issues which are relevant for Spain and um, the region. Um, so, yeah, that's that was a very uh, good meeting with a lot of friends and people uh, who joined us um, in person. Um, at the um, uh, Spanish Council, which is a very important place also for all the researchers there. Um, and after May, uh, we went on the road. And I know, Mark, that you have been also um, traveling during the summertime. Uh, you have been in Washington, in Chicago, in Adelaide. Um, that was also um, organized with our GIFP friends, um, so Australian Farm Institute, uh, Canadian Agri-Food Policy Institute, and the Farm Foundation from the U.S., uh, so maybe you would like to tell us more about that one. Yeah, I mean th th these were these were great opportunities, as as I think you know we've said. You know we launched this global partnership with um, AFI Farm Foundation, CAPI in Canada, um, and what we've been doing really over the last year or so is is going to each other's events and really making the case for global collaboration on on some of these important topics about how we do build a more resilient and sustainable food and agriculture system. And, and it was great to get different perspectives, um, you know, both at Farm Foundation Summit in Chicago in, in June and, and then to, to, to go to Australia and, and listen to some of the plans that they've got, um, where, of course, sustainability and climate really do come um, very sharply together. So great opportunities and, and great to spend time with, with people like Richard at AFI and Shari at um, Farm Foundation and, and Tyler. I think this is really building um, building the bond that, that we need between us, and I think will set us up well for what's uh, what's also coming in the uh, in the autumn. That's great to hear, and I know that there are plenty of things coming up uh, in autumn um, as we are full speed on organizing everything from September, of course, till March. Um, so, what would be the most important now to mention, Mark? Well, I think from my point of view, I mean, the, the, the other thing that we worked on, obviously, extensively over the summer was really starting to progress the call to action, which you, you mentioned that we launched uh, in, in Brussels at the annual conference in, in March. Um, you know, we, we used the opportunity in Madrid to, to sharpen that um, even further to, to talk about the importance of um, the enabling role that policy and legislation can 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 take uh, in this effort, but also in terms of what all of us as stakeholders can do as we we try to build this uh, build this resilient and sustainable uh, food and ag system that is nature positive, that is is climate smart. You know, a key part of that, Emma, as, as you well know, is what we've been doing on on regenerative agriculture. Um, I'm delighted that we've just. Um, published the percept first our first really perceptions and insights report, which is based on twelve months worth of work of interviews and workshops and and consultation with with our network on just what it would take to develop and scale regenerative agriculture. Some great takeaways there in relation to how we we need to focus on the outcomes, how we need to ensure that the finance and the funding is in place. Not not just to um, support mar uh, farmers to make the transition, but to sustain it. I think sometimes that gets lost in the in the debate. And I given think this that, is, 
yeah, so, so, sorry, this is, I think, also the opportunity just to thank you, all those who participated in, in, in the survey we have done uh, to prepare uh, that report on regenerative agriculture and who participated also uh, in the funding, the transition workshop. You're, you're quite right. I mean, the, the, you know, the, the, the forum is only as strong as the people that participate, you know, within it. And as as you know, Emma, um, over the last 15, 16 years or so, We've we we've we really had a very inclusive approach to to that, and I was really pleased with the diversity of people that contributed to not only the um the the, the work that we did on the report itself, um on both sides of the Atlantic, I should say, um but also in the in the in the workshop that we did on funding and financing that the transition um a couple of weeks ago in in Brussels, right across the spectrum, civil society financial institutions, policymakers, as well as those in the agri-food industry, and of course, the farmers and the, the landowners and land managers themselves. So I think that that, that has been been at the core, really, of what we've been trying to do in, in taking forward the call to action. It, it, it touches on a number of uh, the different commitments that, um, that we made, and, and obviously we're looking forward to reporting back on overall progress at the annual conference next next March. So that's really stood out for me. And then, you know, as you say, we're kind of going into the autumn now and um we're, we're busy on on the on the first event um that, that that's coming up at the end of October um with the the global partners and um and the global forum for farm policy uh, and innovation uh which is going to take place at the OECD um and we're doing that on that subject of uh, the future of agriculture sustainability and the role of trade so I'm really looking forward to that, Emma. I think that's going to be a, 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 a pivotal moment for us in, in the autumn. Uh, I think it's also uh, the moment to 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 say thank you to OECD and uh, the Dutch government who are uh, the one um, giving us the, the, the auspices and, and helping us to put that together. Uh, and I do think that will be also um, very interesting for us to 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 use the call to action uh, to build also upon that event, because of course for us, it's also very important to um, speak about um, sustainable supply chain and trade. And I know that will be uh, one of the core topic of, of that event. So also uh, very much looking forward um, to that event. Um, and also in the pipeline, we have a November event, uh, that time on the recovery plan for Ukraine. Um, so that's also um, in line to to enhance some regenerative agriculture principles and to see what we can uh, do and prepare, um, yes, for, for that region. So uh, I don't know if you would like to add anything here also. Yeah, I think, um, I mean, you know, but with, with both of those uh, events, um, and at least from, from my perspective, um, the opportunity to talk about, you know, what, what a common understanding of of sustainability in agriculture is i'm talking really about the discussions that i think we're going to have at the oecd and 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 really what are the outcomes that we're aiming at and and then you know probably we have different approaches about how we get there between say europe and 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 maybe the us or canada and um australia but it it really is the outcomes i think that we're we're looking for and and of course trade you know the question is is trade an enabler or a disabler and Whilst I don't think we we'd intend to to look um, at at solving or even attempting to solve any issues that might be there in the in the short term, what what does the ideal state look like uh, in terms of the role of trade and 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 how do we get there? And I think you know I, I'm I'm sure that some of the the elements of the work that we've done on regenerative agriculture will feed into that. Uh, I should also say, of course, I'm very grateful to not just the the, the Netherlands uh, permanent representation in in Paris, the OECD, but but also Australia and and Japan um, have uh, have helped us to, to support in that. And then, as you say, you know, into into Ukraine. I mean, you know, the the, the, the tragic events continue to unfold there, and um, and for those of us that that are in agriculture and 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 know that country well. Um, I think the opportunity to address some of the issues um, about how we um, not just get through the next two years, but 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 hopefully as um, things become um, more stable, how do we enable um, Ukraine with its tremendous agriculture sector to 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 not only recover but to to put itself back on that um, trajectory of growth that it that it had? And again, as as you've alluded to, how does 
Um, how do the print, can the principles of regenerative agriculture help us to, to do that? So I, I'm really looking forward to, to, to that um, opportunity to, to bring, you know, convene different stakeholders, to, to convene with our Ukrainian uh, colleagues. Um, I think that's going to be a big moment on our agenda through to the end of the year. And I think this is also um, the moment to say that, of course, all those events and outcomes will be used to build the program of our next annual conference, also taking place next March 26 in Brussels, that we can already reveal. Um, and um, to, to, to say thank you to all the strategic partners and uh, supporting partners and all those being with us, family and friends, um, to build the program of that big March event and all the pre forum events we're planning since January but that will be for the next podcast just to to say what we're uh, what we will be doing during the winter and springtime so uh quite a lot already uh for autumn I would say well as you say we're, we're you know we're just under six months um out from the annual conference which you know is still is you know better than I do Emma is is the the flagship really of um of what the forum does um and I think you know when when you reflect on on the events of the last twelve months again, the, the, the urgency of the of the climate crisis, um, you know, couldn't couldn't be clearer. Um, you know, we 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 keep having this message of of the need for for action, and 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 somebody uh, who's been involved with this for a long time says, asked me if that was a little bit repetitive. It is repetitive because it needs to be repetitive because. Um, this is going to have an impact on on all of us, and will certainly have an impact on the the economic, the social, and the environmental sustainability of agriculture. So we 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 need to keep at this, um, remembering that that farmers and land managers uh, are at the center of this, and and we need to help them uh, as much as we possibly can to, as I say, make and make make the transition, but also to um, to sustain it. So I'm sure we'll get into into that topic, those topics at the um, at the annual conference, and of course it will be a, a great opportunity to to reflect on on the first year really of the call to action. You know what what we've done um, and some of the uh, some of the examples and illustrations that that our partners, our, our diverse range of partners from civil society to to some of the corporations that are involved in in the agri food industry. Have been undertaking to, to to help deliver against you know some not all um but some of those uh those commitments that that we made uh it is a long game we won't get everything done um in one year but i'm i'm really encouraged by the start that we've made so i'm also looking forward to all the events outcomes discussions and meetings uh with the great team we have here uh, supporting us uh so also a big thank you to all of them uh to make all of that possible well, as you say, Emma, you know the, the the forum is 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 only as ever ever as good as the people that participate. You know within it is it is a convening platform at its heart. You know I have to to, to obviously thank all our um, partners that that so graciously give their time as much as anything else to to helping to to build and and implement the program. Um, the challenge that they that they give us. Um, and that they give each other is um, is really good to see. It's healthy. We we need more of this, not 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 less of it. Not just in the forum, I would say, but 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 everywhere else. Um, and of course, you know, to to you, Emma, and also to the team. Um, you know, we're, we're a small ish organization um, that that again is built on the shoulders of of the people that really work very hard because they're passionate about. What, what the forum does. So, you know, at least from my point of view, um, it's an absolute pleasure to work with with everyone that's um that's involved. And uh and and the reason we are here today, 15, 16 years later, um, is is due to, to the contributions that all of you um have made. So big thank you from me as well. I'm looking forward to the next six months. Exactly. And we do hope to see you all in person or online the 26th of March latest. Uh, and also, of course, with our chairman opening that big event, Janusz Potocznik. So, yeah, um, plenty of things to do. Um, so we know what we are planning uh, for the next events and, and um, we will be certainly keep you posted. Great. Well, thank you, Emma. Thanks for joining us on the Food Systems Podcast. A great way to kick off our autumn season. Plenty coming up uh, in the next uh, couple of weeks on, on the podcast show itself. Stay tuned for that. But 
for now. Thank you very much indeed for listening and we'll see you again next time.